Hey everyone, my name is Leo and welcome to my channel. I'll be studying a Master's in Biotechnology at Cambridge University this year and today I'd like to share with you an overview of my application process and what you can do to maximise the chances of your application being successful. Timestamps for each section of the video are on the screen now and I'll likely be diving into each topic in further detail in future videos so be sure to look out for those. So the first thing you're going to want to think about is your motivation for wanting to study a Master's. This will vary from person to person, but some general questions you should be asking yourself are Do I enjoy studying? Will a master's improve my employment prospects in my chosen field? Or do I want to pursue a different career to my undergraduate degree? If you answered yes to at least one of these, then perhaps a master's is the right choice for you. Make sure your reasons are solid and you understand the benefits a master's can bring to you as this will be crucial when you fill out your actual application. Once you've decided you want to study your master's at Cambridge, the next thing you'll need to figure out is what course you're going to study and whether Cambridge even offers it or not, which you can do using the postgraduate course directory on their website. Master's courses are usually more specialised than undergraduate ones, so have a think about which modules you've enjoyed studying in the past or perhaps what kind of career you'd like to pursue in the future. If you've found a few that you like the sound of, really take the time to explore the specifics of each course, including the course length, whether it's predominantly taught, research-based, or a combination of both, and how exactly it's going to be examined in the end. Once you've found the course you want, make sure to bookmark the page as you'll be referring back to it a lot when filling out your application. The second thing to consider is going to be your application timeline. Realistically speaking, your timeline actually begins as soon as you start your undergraduate degree, as your first and second years will be the time you spend building up your academic and extracurricular skills and experiences that will ultimately help you stand out in your master's application. Applications for most courses usually open a year in advance of their start date, i.e. around September or October time at the start of the UK academic year, though of course make sure to check your chosen course page as this may differ. The deadline for applications can vary greatly, with some extending until summer months and others closing much earlier. My advice would be to try and apply relatively early, ideally in the first semester of your final year if you're an undergraduate student, giving you enough time to complete the necessary parts of the application and request references from your tutors, as well as the fact that you will likely have more free time compared to your second and third semesters. Even if you have projects in your final year that you still haven't completed yet at the time of application, you can still write about the process and skills you're developing along the way and how that makes you a suitable master's candidate. Now, assuming your application passes the first stage, you will be invited to interview around the start of your second semester, though this will vary depending on when you submitted your application. If that goes well, then you'll receive a conditional offer, at which point you'll want to spend the rest of your second and third semesters studying hard to meet those academic conditions. Now it's time to touch upon the actual application process, parts of which will probably feel familiar to you if you've done applications for undergraduate courses before. After visiting the application portal on the course page and filling out your personal details and educational background, you'll be asked about your Cambridge College preferences. In short, for those of you that don't know, Cambridge University operates under a collegiate system, with each student not only being part of an academic faculty, but also of one of the 31 college communities. When applying for Masters at Cambridge, you can list two colleges as your top preferences, though due to the limited number of college spaces per course, the university may not always be able to accommodate that preference. When choosing a college, there are a number of factors to consider, such as the available facilities, size of the college, and the types of funding available for postgraduate students. I myself am going to be a part of Fitzwilliam College, one of the smaller colleges on the outskirts of the city centre, which I chose due to its quaint and calm appearance as well as the amount of funding I offered for my specific course. Funding is a big part of the application, which I will likely cover in a separate video, but just bear in mind that there are a number of ways to fund your master's course, ranging from government loans to university and college scholarships, and that the majority of these will require separate applications with early deadlines. Regardless of which college you end up at though, just remember that each college offers a slightly different yet nonetheless excellent experience of Cambridge University and that you shouldn't stress too much about your college choice at the end of the day. The fourth topic of this video is going to cover the core of your master's application, which is your CV and personal statement. There's of course lots of different ways to format your CV, but in general you want to include a section on your educational background with relevant academic modules and projects a section on your internships, work experience and part-time employment, as well as the skills you've gained from them, and finally a section on extracurricular activities and interests you feel are relevant. 
you want to keep it to a single page if possible, so make sure to only include relevant experiences and use section headings to make the layout even clearer and easier to read. Using the course page in this case can help you identify what skills or knowledge they're looking for in their students and can help you to tailor your CV to the specifics of the course, much like you would for a regular job application. Most courses will also require you to write a personal statement or essay of some sort, outlining your motivations for applying and highlighting your strengths and skills. Depending on the course, you may be asked to write a single essay with specific guidance on the topics to include, or this may be split into a few different questions, each requiring a paragraph or mini essay. For my course, I was asked to write about my general reasons for applying to Cambridge University, why this specific course interested me and how I've demonstrated this interest through projects and extracurriculars, and finally, my career goals and how they relate to my chosen career. Even if this isn't specified in your application, Try to include all of these points in your statement, but also remember to make it sufficiently different from your CV as the admissions team won't want to be reading the same thing twice in the same application. The fifth and final point of this video is going to be about interviews. If all goes well and you pass the first stage of the application process, you'll be invited to an interview with at least one of the directors or managers from your chosen course. These will be the people directly involved in the teaching and supervision of your course, so think of the interview as a chance for you to get to know one another better and for them to see whether you're a student they'd actually enjoy teaching or not. Make a note of the date and time of the interview, whether it's online or in person, as well as who will be interviewing you. The last part is key, as you'll usually be able to find out about their academic research areas online, which will give you an idea of the types of questions they may ask. From my experience, they asked me what I knew about the course, what recent news there had been in my chosen field, questions about projects I'd mentioned in my personal statement, and what skills I'd like to gain from doing a master's. They also asked if I had any questions for them at the end, which always impresses them if you have genuinely good questions. But in general, I'd say prepare for a mixture of both personal and academic questions, and make sure you really know why you want to study your chosen course and everything you've written down in your application. Using the course information page can once again help you to learn about the specifics of the course, such as which modules are taught or how the research component of the course works. So that's all from me. I hope you found this overview useful and good luck if you're applying to Cambridge this year. If you have any questions or video suggestions, then feel free to drop a comment down below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, then please consider subscribing. Bye for now.